In this video, we'll take a look at how to create a shadow catcher or shadow pass in Unreal Engine. This may be useful for filmmaking or doing any sort of cinematics, where you might be creating something and then wanting to be able to have a mask to adjust the shadows after you've rendered it out. Now, most offline renders will have this easily done with a shadow pass, but in Unreal, if you're using the deferred render, you don't have a way of doing this very easily because it calculates light and shadow all through one pass. However, we can use a post-process volume as a bit of a cheat or a hack to extract shadow masks from certain objects. I'll go over this process in this video. I'll start off with a simple scene like this, and our goal will be to extract these shadows as a mask. So the first thing I'm going to do is create a material. I'm going to call this material M underscore shadow catcher. We're going to use this material as a way of overriding everything in our screen to be a post process that will extract that shadow out. And the way that we're going to do this is take this material, make its domain a post process so it just has a missive, and we're going to grab the scene texture or what the scene is rendering. So if we set this instead of scene color to post process input zero, we connect that up to a missive color, we get kind of what we normally would render. And if we change this to base color, well, then we'll just see the color without that lighting. So if we take the base color and I copy and paste the scene texture and set one to post process input zero and one to base color for lighting, and we do a bit of a subtract and then we saturate to make that black and white, and we use that as our emissive color, we start to get just the shadow. Now, before we call this done, we're going to want to click on this shadow catcher material here, or this main material uh, section, and we're going to want to scroll down in here and change the blendable location on how it's applied. And we're going to want to make sure it's set to replacing the tone mapper. And now we start to see that that shadow that we get. And that should work. You can experiment with those other settings, but I think this one works the best, replacing the tone mapper. And if we were to save that, we now have kind of our, our shadow pass post process. Now, if you want to make this shadow mask stronger, you could always cheat and throw a bit of a, a multiply in between here. And if you do that, it'll just make that much brighter. But I'll leave it at default uh, for now. So this is pretty much our material uh, graph. And what we can do now is save this and apply it to our scene by going up here and creating a volume. We can search for post-process and create a post-process volume. We'll go on that post-process volume, set it to be unbound, and you can search bounds or just unbound, and you can set this infinite extent unbound to on. That means this post-process volume will affect everything, whether it's within this box or not. And then what we can also do is search material and you'll see this drop down here, post process materials array. We'll add an entry. We'll set it to asset reference, and then we'll drop in our shadow catcher. And now we end up with something like this. Now, the final thing we'll have to do is it doesn't really deal with the, the textures or surfaces too well if they have certain types of uh, diffuse colors or normal maps and, and bump maps and things. So to clean this up a bit, we'll also create another material. Let's call it like M underscore plane or default, whatever we want to call it. And I'll just make a material that's kind of either 100% white or 50% gray. It doesn't really matter uh, in this case. And we're just going to put that onto everything, all the objects, the floor. And now we get something like this. Now the problem is we get the shadows now and the shadows on the objects, but what if I don't want the shadow on the actual surface of the object? So if you don't want the object itself and its shadow, you just want the shadow on the ground. One thing we could do, and there's a couple things we can try here, but one thing we can do is click on this object. We can go to visible, turn it off. Then it's no longer visible, no longer produces a shadow, but then we can search hidden shadow and turn hidden shadow on and then it will render the shadow but the object will be invisible now the only problem with that is you see the shadow of where the object contacts the ground so if you don't want that if you want that object to still be there 
but not have shadows on it, but just have the shadow on the ground, I can turn this object to no more hidden shadow. I can turn it visible back on. And the other thing we can do is click on these objects and search for renderable in main pass, or actually I could search main pass. And a render in main pass, we can turn off. And we can do that for all three of these. And now they show as, as black, but the shadow on the ground is like a mask, it's, it's held out. Now we might get this like flickery anti-aliasing around the edges. If you're saving this out as a separate uh, render pass or something, depending on your sampling settings, it might get rid of that. Another thing you could do if it's just bothering you in the viewport like this is if you go to edit, project settings, and you search here for anti-aliasing, you can change the anti-aliasing method to none, and I'll clean it up, or you can set it to multi-sample uh, anti-aliasing, or I think even fast approximate anti-aliasing. And all those should kind of uh, clean up that flickering. So it's not as bad. You still might see a little bit here and there, um, but for the most part, it won't, won't be as crazy. If you enjoyed this video, if you learned something new, don't forget to like, subscribe, and take a look below in the description. And there's a link to the Patreon there. And if you are part of the Patreon, you'll also get access to the PDF for this video, which goes over all the steps we went over in a little bit more detail.